do you want to point out you here is the rest of the study guide you're talking about nouns, find all the nouns, common, proper, compound, and the nouns you cannot see because you could not find a page number for that. 194 for common, 198 for popular, 194 for compound, and then the page that would help you to do nouns you cannot see is page 55 of your language, which was talking about nouns you cannot see, like courage and love and fear, etc. All right, today we're going to review a little bit more about, we're going to use this section. This is very like the test, except it's combining a lot of things into one thing. We're going to do a lot of things that we're going to do on the test. Like first thing we're going to do is we're going to say what kind of sentence these, like, these are. Make sure the whole sentence can be seen. All right. So let's look at the first sentence I have on the board. All right, the first sentence I have on the board is, the name of our school is Carol Christian School. All right, so the first thing we want to do is say, what kind of sentence is that? Um, Grace. Very good. So you would write, on the test you'd put, D C declarative. All right, and how would you punctuate it, Adam? Um, so at the end of the sentence, right underneath, you pay attention, so you insert a period at the end of the sentence. All right, and if you cannot see, you need to get where you can see, because this is important. Read sentence number two. Mr. Riceberg is our principal. What kind of sense would that be, Owen? Declare it again. but you won't have to tell me this. That is a totally different section on the test where there will be no mistakes except for tell me what kind of sentence it is and how you punctuate it. Okay? But there will be a section where they're going to give you sentences and you have to go through and fix all the mistakes, capitalization, and punctuation mistakes. Now, are all sentences going to have both? No. Probably not, except for maybe the ending punctuation. They're probably all going to be missing their ending punctuation. All right? But we've already done that, haven't we? And we told what kind of sentence it was. So let's go back to the name of our school is Carroll Christian School. Jonathan, what is something that needs to be fixed in that sentence? Using proofreader marks. Capitalize Carroll Christian School. Okay, why can't you just tell me one thing? Yes, but you would capitalize Carroll 
and you would capitalize Christian, and you would capitalize school. Because it is one thing, you need to capitalize all three things. What else needs to be fixed, Maya? Um, you need to capitalize the. Yes, because it is the beginning of the sentence. All right, is there anything else? All right. No, there is not. What do you think there is? Um, the name of our school that is not proper, Carroll Christian School, is proper. Carroll Christian School has already been capitalized. I the word school by itself does not need to be capitalized. Couldn't get where you can see instead of raising your hand saying there's a mistake, guys. I already told you guys, if you can't see, get where you can see. Let's move on to the next sentence. Mr. Riceberg is our principal. All right, so Lily, what do I need to fix? That's the word that I am Mr. Yes, Mr. For one thing, it's the beginning of a sentence. For another thing, it is a title of respect. Jonathan, your eyes should be up here at all times. Tess, now what? Repeat it after Mr. Yes, because it is an abbreviated title of respect. It's not the whole word. Landon. Capitalize R in Riceburg. Yes, the R in Riceburg because it is his name. Anybody see anything else? You shouldn't because that is it. Mr. Riceburg is our principal. All right, go on to the next one. Mrs. McLaughlin, will we learn division? All right. Um, who hasn't done one? Liam. Capitalize Mrs. Mrs. Because it's the beginning of a sentence and it is a title yeah. of respect. Yeah. Zeke. Um, capitalize the um, the M in McLaughlin. Yes, yeah. the M in McLaughlin because it is a name. You need to be where you can see already, not have to stand up to see just because I call on you. You need to get where you can see already. All right, who has an answer? Abby. Yes, Mrs. This is Mrs. MRS, period, because that is an abbreviated title of respect. Micah. Um, capitalize cake. Do you know that we're still on Mrs. McLaughlin? Will we learn division? I haven't even read the next sentence again yet. We need to pay attention, okay? Micah, I still want you to answer. There is something else that needs to be done to Mrs. McLaughlin. Will we learn division? I don't think you've really been paying attention. The rules were that you are going to fix capitalization and punctuation mistakes. So if you're still looking for a capitalization mistake, maybe there's not another capitalization mistake. Maybe it's a punctuation mistake. There will be a section on your test tomorrow where you have to fix capitalization and punctuation mistakes. So do you see a punctuation mistake? Mrs. McLaughlin, will we learn division? Adam? Um, capitalize division. No, why would you capitalize division? Um, I thought it was a particular thing. No, it's just a math. I think I know what you mean. I already know that's what you're going to say. I wouldn't call on you, especially since I pretty much made it clear that it was a punctuation mistake. Oh, no, no. no. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan? Well, there's actually two more wrong things, but I'm going to say... No, one. there's not. What? what? In McLaughlin, only the M should be capitalized because it's one last name. Okay. You do know it is my last name, so I do know how to spell my last name. Yeah. Have you ever noticed McDonald's is M-C capital D? Yeah. Some people with a Mac name... It's MC capitalized. So, bud, that would be why I capitalized L because I do know how to spell my name. Okay? Then insert period after Mrs. McLaughlin. No. I mean, I mean not period. Um, comma. Yes. Why? Because we're talking. Because it's 
the person in the swatch for sure. Yeah. Direct address. Remember, Micah? Talking to Mrs. McLaughlin. Mrs. McLaughlin, mm -hmm. will we learn division? They're talking to her. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Take us on a field trip to Fort McHenry. Owen. Purple is the key in shape. Yeah, because it is the yes. beginning yeah. of the sentence. What else? Are you going to give me a serious answer? Purple is Fort McHenry. All right, because it is a Fort. Both words need to be capitalized. All right. I loved reading Little House on the Prairie. All right, Grace. Capitalize I. Yeah, two reasons. First of all, it's the beginning of the sentence, and then we learned the rule. Always capitalize the word I. Okay? Maya, I don't know why your pencil is in your hand. I need you to answer. You're supposed to be paying attention up here. Are you working on your paper? Yes. All right, I'm going to give you a tally there. We're doing things that are going to be on the test. And I have told you that we're going to do that paper together. So please, would you please tell me what else needs to be fixed? And I love reading Little House on the Prairie. Little, why? Because it's the first word in the title. Yeah, it's the first word in the title because the rule is the first the word, word, the last, last word, word, and every and important word in the titles of uh, books, books, stories. stories poems, and songs. So that's the first word. So what else needs to be capitalized, Olivia? Prairie. Prairie, because that is the last word. I right? was talking about Olivia Yinger, but that's okay. So Olivia Yinger, you answer the next one. Capitalize house. House, very good. Little, prairie, and house. Are there any more important words in Little House on the Prairie? No. Would on be considered important? No. 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 So only? The first word, the last word, and a very important word, which is house. By the way, there will be a title on your paper tomorrow where you'll have to think that one through. It will be underlined like this so you know it's a book, and you will have to think it through. First word, last word, every important word. Do you understand me? All right. So um, that is it. Now we're going to do another thing. We're going to go back through this time. And we're going to do the part of the test where we are doing the nouns. So we're going to find all the nouns. So, let's get back in her seat. All right, so you're going to circle every single noun, no matter what kind of noun it is, even if it's compound noun, common noun, proper noun, it doesn't matter what kind of noun it is. All right, so let's start with Brennan. Brennan, give me a noun. We're still on these sentences. Oh. Sorry. We'll get to those in a minute. We're on these sentences. The name of our school is Carol's Mission School. So what's the first noun? School. All right. So this one. I keep skipping, but school. Right there. All right. What's another noun? Yes. Remember, this is a compound noun. So Carol Christian School needs to be all circled with one circle. If you are naming a particular place and it has three words in the name, then that whole thing is one noun. Carol Christian School. One circle around it. Do you guys understand that? Yes. You need to know that for the test tomorrow. All right, are you understanding that? Carroll Christian School. It says Carroll Christian School, so that's one noun. That is talking about one thing. This is common. This is proper. Okay, there is another one in that sentence. Eric, can you find the other noun in that sentence? The name of our school is Carroll Christian School. Name. Name is a noun. Okay, let's go to the next one. Mr. Riceberg is our principal. Mr. Riceberg, you circle the whole entire thing because it is a compound noun. Mr. and Riceberg going together to make one person, right? What else? Um, Micah. 
principal, principal. Principal would be the common noun. All right, let's go on to the next one. Mrs. McLaughlin, will we learn division? Jonathan. Division. Division. Division is a noun. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, those are all nouns. Give me another one, Lily. Yes, Mrs. McLaughlin. That would be a compound noun. All right, take us on a field trip to Fort McHenry. Take us on a field trip to Fort McHenry. Um, field trip? Yeah, I'm going to go for that. I'm not sure, but I think so. I'm going to go ahead and go for that. That one's a weird one. You won't have a hard one like an old test. All right. But trip field is not... Um, adjective describing trip. Field trip is a particular thing, right? What? All right, well, there's another one. Liam? Fort McHenry. Fort McHenry. That is another compound noun. Isn't that an action? You? No, it's not. Take us on a field trip. Okay? Oh, we're talking about the We're not talking about tripping. <sighs> it is a field trip. You've taken them before, so. I love reading Little House on the Prairie. I love reading Little House on the Prairie. Owen? Little House on the Prairie? Yes, the whole entire thing, because what is Little House on the Prairie? A book. book. Yes, yeah, so that is not even a book. So the whole thing is a compound noun, Little House on the Prairie. All right, very good. Now let's look at these, all right? Now, this is not quite what's on the test tomorrow, because on the test tomorrow, uh, I went too far down. Move it back up a little bit. You need to be quiet. Stop whispering. On the test tomorrow, there is a section where there are not many, whoops. Whoa. <laughs> that was crazy. Compound and no. No. What is the word? 
Lightning. 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 Lightning is just common. common. It is not compound. There is not light and mean. What is mean? All right, next. Pine codes. And that is? Pine compound. Pine and compound. Mountain. Common. 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 Very good. Common. All right, let's do our paper now. We're going to start with page 58. On page 58. First thing we're going to do is use proofreader marks to mark which letters should be capitalized. This is put a star by it because this is similar to what you're going to do on the test. There's not a lot on this paper that has to do with what you're doing on the test, but this does. All right, so you guys ready? Okay, here's your All right, so let's read the first sentence together. It says, My brother Wesley has a new camera. Capitalize? Wesley. Start with my because it's the beginning of a sentence. That would be a good place to start instead of skipping. Okay, then you capitalize. Wesley. Wesley. That's and that would be it. Moving on to the next thing. The Smith will take a trip to Great Falls, Montana. So, the beginning of a sentence. Smith. Smith because it is somebody's name. Great Falls, which is a particular place, but that's not the end of it because it is actually. Great Falls, Montana. That is the whole place, the city and the state. So Great Falls, Montana would be a compound noun, wouldn't it? All right, next in church, you're saying, come ye thankful people, come. Amen. The gang of sentence. And then the other thing is a, no, who said church? Did they name the church? No. no. Guys, you do not capitalize church unless they name the church. You've got to have the name of the church, not just church. Church is common. Faith Baptist Church, that is proper. Grace Baptist Church, that is proper. Church of the Open Door, that is proper. But not just church. You guys need to get that in your head, just like school. Remember this? School is common. Carol Christian School, that's proper. All right. But what is the thing that they have in quotation marks? What is that? It's a song. So we need to do the first word, which is come. We need to do the last word, which is come. And then we need to do every important word. So what are the important words? Thankful. Oh, you skip one. Ye is important too. I know it's short, but it is like the word you. It's an old fashioned way of saying you. Thankful. All right, so it's you, ye, and thankful, and people. people. Every word is So every word in it ended up being done because they were all important. There was the first word, the last word, and all the words were important. All right? Is it really important? Because, Jonathan? Not exactly. Then don't do it. Put yeah. your hand down and let's go on. Yeah, Next, our teacher is reading the book Hans Brinker to us. Our. Our, as the beginning of the sentence. And what's the name of the book? Hans, Hans Brinker. Hans. Hans. That's how you pronounce that. That is Hans Brinker. So we would capitalize the first word and the last word. And that's all there is. There's no important words. There's no in, important words because that's it's only two words in it. All right, next, Dr. Lewis is our dentist. Doctor. Doctor, at the beginning of the sentence, and as a title of respect. Lewis. And Lewis, because that is his name. And by the way, Dr. Lewis would be a compound noun if we were doing that. All right, let's go to the next section. In the next section, you're supposed to write the plural of each noun. This will not be on the test, okay? This is just review, and they want the plural for child. Children. No, not child, and you know that. I just, I, I mean, out of us. It's the word. No, it's not. I don't say I have four childs. I, I meant us. I do not say I have four childs. I don't know what time. We're doing the plural. That means more than one. Yeah, child. It's us. No. No. You do not say I have four childs. And you know that. And they've already told you the answer anyway. Three. Um. I have four. Tell them again. 
Children! Just write child and add R-E-N. That's how you do it. Children. Number two, going down, the word is? Wife. wife. What's the rule? Words end again? F-E, change the F for F-E to a V and add E-S. So wife becomes wife. All right, next is? Match. match. What does it end in? There was some entity in here that was thinking you had to drop the CH. I didn't say to drop anything. You just add an ES and don't forget the T because this is a TCH word. Next is monkey. Okay, that's a word ending in Y. What's in front of the Y? Vowel. So that tells you to just add an S. When there's a vowel in front of the Y, you just add S. It doesn't matter. Alright, so just add S to monkey and you're right. Then we have number five, deer. 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 Just write the same word again. Deer is singular, deer is plural. And then we have horse. Horse. But you just add S. Write the word horse. It becomes known as horses, but you just are adding an S. It looks like E-S. Because it ends in E. There's no rule about that. All right, now we're going to do possessive phrases. And there is some possessive on the test, but you are just going to write the word in the parentheses as possessive. Plus, you have to write sentences using possessive phrases. So if it says Carter has a sister, then you would write Carter has sister. Yes, you would need to write Carter's sister with Carter apostrophe S sister. Can you please? Oh, they've already done that one for you. All right, but you're going to have to reuse it in a sentence tomorrow. Okay? So you would say maybe Carter's sister is named. Um, I have a question. Carter's sister is named. Isabel. That works. Okay. Going on to the next one. Dad won an award. So that would be Dad's award. Dad's award. Dad apostrophe S award. Use that in a sentence though. Dad won a No. Dad's award. You've got to say Dad's award. Okay. You're not changing them to other ones. You're not going to possess it. If you're using possessive, so can you use dad's award in a sentence? You've got to say dad's award. Try it again. Dad's award is shiny. Okay, that works. Okay? If you're not putting dad's award together, you're not really doing possessive. Does everybody understand that? Yes. You've got to know that for the test tomorrow. If you say dad won an award, then you took award too far away from dad. And it's no longer possessive. You're not saying dad's award. You've got to be saying Dad's award. Got it? All right. Then it says Mrs. Sa Sanders found her glasses. So that is Mrs. Mrs. Sanders' glasses. Mrs. Sanders' glasses. Mrs. Sanders' glasses. The apostrophe S apostrophe S goes after Sanders. And how would you use that in a sentence, Abby? Okay, Mrs. Sanders' glasses is very special to her, or are very special to her. Or you could have said Mrs. Sanders' glasses were lost, because it just said she found them, but they were lost. All right, what about this one? This water bottle has a straw. Water, so water bottle straw. straw. Very good, water bottle straw. Water bottle straw, and apostrophe S goes after bottle. Oh, somebody in class had this the other day. Was it you, Brennan? The water bottle straw was missing. Remember the other day when you didn't have your straw in your water bottle? The water bottle <coughs> straw was missing. Okay, that would be a good sentence there. All right, what about the zipper on my backpack is broke, broken? Mom. Tess? No, I don't want to send a shed. I want you to tell me what it is. What is it? How do you think it's a phrase? By the way, you guys are not writing these sentences, are you? 
No. You don't have to write the signature, just put the thing. Mrs. Sanders Glasses. Get rid of that. We're not writing sentences here, we're just making a possessive phrase. I'm just having you practice doing sentences once I put you to on the test tomorrow. Can you just tell me the possessive phrase? For the zipper on my backpack is broken. Yes, backpack zipper. That's all you need, backpack zipper. We are not writing these sentences, guys. We are just writing possessive phrase, backpack zipper. Now, who wants to use that one in a sentence? Jonathan? I tiptoed across the hallway, comma, but I knocked over my backpack's zipper. Okay, that really doesn't really make sense. You can't just knock over the backpack's zipper. All right? All right, and then... You really didn't write all that, did you? No. Okay. Um... How about the simply, the backpack zipper is what they said. The backpack the zipper has fallen off. Okay, the backpack zipper has fallen off. It would be one. It's broken, right? Yep. All right. Kyle has an idea for dinner. So that would be Kyle's, Kyle's idea. idea. Very good. Kyle's idea. So who can use Kyle's idea as a sentence now? Olivia? Kyle's idea is for dinner. All right, Kyle's idea is for, well, why don't we just tell what his idea for dinner was? Kyle's idea for dinner is? To have lasagna. Very good, Kyle's idea for dinner is lasagna. All right, so which brings us to the last thing which says my initials are. Do you remember what initials are? So it's a first name. First name, whatever your first name starts with, you put that letter in a period. Mm -hmm. So since my first name starts with a B, I would put a B period. My middle name starts with a J, so I would put a J period. My last name starts with an M, as you know, so I would put M period. So you need to put your first name, the first letter, and a period. Your middle name's first letter and a period, and your last name, the first letter with a period. Those are your initials. You should have three letters, like this. Okay, did you hear what I said to do? Then you should have done it, okay? Right did you do what I asked? Did you do what I asked? Did you capitalize all of them? They should all be capitalized. Did you capitalize them? Initials are capitalized. One of my favorite holidays is, remember holidays are capitalized. Just write it, don't, we're not gonna take the time to write them. I mean, just say them. No, we're not gonna say them. Just put your favorite holiday. They do give you a little bit of room here and they give you a little bit more on the next line. How do you spell it? Uh-uh. Don't ask me how to spell something. Just make sure you capitalize it because we capitalize special days and holidays. Spell it the best way you know how. Okay? It is in the month of, so your holiday, whatever holiday you just wrote about, what month is it in? So if you picked Christmas, what month is that? December. If you pick Thanksgiving, what month is that? November. Did anybody pick a holiday that they do not know when it is? I know. Everybody knows. I don't need you to talk out. All right. The name of the place I live is, so put, just put your town. What's the name of your town? No, don't talk out. And if I'm allowed to choose a restaurant for my family to go to, I choose... So this is a particular restaurant, so you're gonna still capitalize it. All of these things were supposed to be capitalized. All right, even if you're not finished filling in a section, do not turn this paper in until you do. Let's go to the other paper, because remember we have two papers to do. So you'll have to finish that in a minute. So everybody go to the other paper, and there's gonna be some things we skipped here too. Please go to the other paper now. We will come back and we'll answer questions on this. Please go to the other paper now. All right, we're gonna match up some compound words. So jelly beans. beans. So match up jelly and beans. Can you shout out? Yes, you may. Corn cob. Corn cob. Corn cob. What's a corn cob? Is it corn on the cob? Next, foot ball. Football. Football. Hay stack. Pine clothes. All right. Later, you will draw pictures. You will not do that now, so do not get out your colored pencils. Put them away. 
I am not going to stop in the middle of this to draw pictures. You can do that when we're done with the rest. There's corn. No, stop. Stop. Moving on to the next thing, we're going to draw a line to separate the subject and the predicate. Again, this is not on the test. Chris and David built a fort in the backyard. What's the subject? Chris and David draw the line. And what did they do? Built a fort in the backyard. So that would be the predicate. You are not underlining them. You are just dividing them. Do not underline once and underline twice. They're just telling you to divide like this, up and down. So put a line after Chris and David. Read the next one with me. Hannah wrote and mailed a letter to her parents. Subject? Hannah. Hannah. What did Hannah do? Wrote a letter to her parents. Hannah is a subject, wrote another letter to her grandparents. Who's the predicate? Hannah. Hannah. I baked and frosted those chocolate cupcakes. I. I. That's it. What did I do? Baked and frosted those chocolate cupcakes. Mom's soup smells so good. Mom's soup. Very good. Mom's soup. What did mom's soup do? It smells so good. All right. Those warm boots fit my feet perfectly. Those warm boots. Those warm boots. What do they do? Fit my feet perfectly. All right, the next thing you're going to do, and again, this will not be on the test, is you are going to connect those two choppy sentences with a connecting word. All right, our class collected food. We made food baskets. You are connecting them with the word and. Do not forget the comma. Do you guys see the comma right by the word and? Yeah. All right, and you already know where to put it because they already have them as two separate sentences. You are putting them together. Do you need to still capitalize the word we? No, because you're putting the two choppy sentences together with a connecting word. So you're no longer capitalizing the first word of the second sentence. All right, what's the next one? We could write notes. We could make cards. What are connecting words you using this time? Or. We could write notes. Or we could make cards. Again, on the second sentence, do not capitalize it anymore because you're putting it together. Use a comma and a connecting word, no longer capitalizing it. It was fun to make the baskets. It was more fun to deliver them. This time you're connecting them with the word but, but the comma and the word but. This time you're not capitalizing the second it for the second sentence. Make sure you do not capitalize that second sentence anymore. All right, now you may go back and finish up those other things.